Well, after last month's devastating garment factory collapse and fire in Bangladesh, are you taking a second look at the labels in your clothing? If you find a Made in Bangladesh label, is it chilling? Workers there made as little as $38 a month. They were made to work even after the factory was declared dangerous. Then uh, there was the collapse and fire, more than 1,100 killed. Since the collapse, a number of mostly European retailers signed on to a new safety pledge that will require clothing makers to pay for factory upgrades, hold them legally accountable for accidents. It would also create a new governance board to do inspections, rather than the middleman companies that have sprung up and are paid by apparel makers to go and inspect factories. The thinking is that that obviously has not worked. Advocates are calling all this a good first step, but major American retailers like The Gap and Walmart have not signed on. So what should consumers do? Dara O'Rourke is associate professor at the University of California, Berkeley, also co-founder of The Good Guide. It ranks products from clothing to toothpaste on safety and environmental and ethical standards. Dara, welcome. Thank you very much. And you are sort of the go-to guy uh, on this, how things are actually made. Have people been calling you, asking you know, what to do after Bangladesh? Absolutely. I think the scale of this tragedy was just so great, where, as you mentioned, over 1,100 workers died in this one building collapse. And you know, a week later, another eight workers died in a fire. Last November, 112 workers died in a fire in Bangladesh. And I think the scale and continuous nature of these tragedies, I think, is having more and more consumers and more and more people in the U.S. and Europe are kind of stopping and and wondering, are there really some kind of hidden costs behind these low, low prices that they've been benefiting from in the store? So I think we're getting more and more people who are asking the simple question of where did my T-shirt come from or where did my jeans or where did my cell phone come from and how was it made and under what conditions and and really, you know, can I feel good buying this product? But once you decide to look at your label, then what? Uh, you, the question is, do you stop uh, buying things that say made in Bangladesh? Uh, Disney has already announced they'll end clothing production there in Bangladesh. But what does that do to the Bangladeshi workers who already are hardly making anything if, if factories pull out? Yeah, no, that's a really good point. I think that, that the certainly the advocacy community um, the labor unions and the labor NGOs and the student movement have not been calling for a boycott of Bangladesh, have not been calling for companies to cut and run, if you will, but rather for them to commit to investing and in actually improving conditions. You know, Bangladesh has the lowest wages in the world for apparel, $38 per month, and the major U.S. brands and retailers have been benefiting, have been profiting off of those low wages and off of very low uh, regulatory standards and very poor conditions have basically been subsidizing profits for U.S. brands and retailers for the last 10 years. And so I think the the request from the advocacy community is for these brands to actually commit to staying and solving these problems and commit to, I think, the first ever multi-stakeholder binding agreement that would obligate the brands to underwrite the costs of both repairing and renovating these buildings, which are way below standards, doing independent safety inspections, reporting those inspections publicly, and terminating factories that don't make upgrades. So it's, it, this, this accord is really the first time we've seen the government, the labor groups, the international labor organization, and now basically all of the major European retailers and brands have signed on to this critical agreement. The, the really glaring absence here is of U.S. brands and retailers. The Gap, JCPenney, Children's Place, Walmart are basically uh, not stepping up to take the responsibility to commit to actually solving these tragedies. Well, let's take a look and see what the concerns might be. For instance, I, I laid out briefly what the uh, pledge calls for, and one of the things it calls for is this implementation plan and this new uh, governing board which seems uh, as if it could be wonderful if it could be put together and work, but this idea of having labor, the companies, maybe money coming from governance, what is it? it would it be, would it have a seat like at The Hague or something? Where where does it exist? Yeah, no, so it's, it's a very interesting kind of first-of-its-kind initiative that would create a new kind of governing organization that would include the big retailers and brands at the table. They would have seats as well as the big international apparel unions that represent apparel workers around the world, as well as local 
Bangladeshi NGOs and groups as well as the Bangladeshi government. So it is um, really the critical thing about it is that it has a central role for workers. It has a central role for the local organizations to participate in beginning to create binding enforceable programs. And the U.S. the U.S. brands like the Gap, you know, issued a press release saying the legal commitment is something we can't sign on to. The American Apparel and Footwear Association issued a press release that also said, look, legal solutions aren't the answer here. What we want is flexibility. And and basically those are all code words for the U.S. brands and retailers don't want to commit to actually paying what it's going to cost and actually spending the next several years committed to bringing up conditions. Well, but uh, to play devil's advocate, it also sounds kind of unwieldy. Now, you just said... Uh, Bangladesh government uh, representation. So is this? would this be just for Bangladesh? Would there be another one for Cambodia, another one for Vietnam, um, another one for China? China. You know, how do you get a governance board in China? Uh, yeah, no, this, is, this is starting just on Bangladesh. And the reason it's starting on Bangladesh is Bangladesh really has become, I think, the most glaring example of this race downwards in the global apparel industry where, you know, the countries you just mentioned, Bangladesh if you can imagine, is half the wages of Cambodia. In the predominant wage, it's one-fifth of the wages in China. So this is not like China. This is the companies that are fleeing China because wages are too high and costs are too high in China are going to Bangladesh. This is a country where we've had basically failed building inspections, corrupt factory managers, corrupt government officials. This is why Bangladesh needs a special focused initiative to try to turn around this race downwards. And and this is something where ultimately, if this works, could be a model for other countries. This is not a silver bullet that's going to solve all of the problems in the apparel industry, and not even all of the problems in the apparel industry in Bangladesh. But this is kind of the first best step forward in Bangladesh in the last five years to begin to turn around these problems. It actually really is critical that multiple different stakeholders are at the table. Again, I, I think it is a smokescreen for industry to say, this is too complicated, or, it's too unwieldy, it's not flexible enough, we want to just go on our own and solve the problems. That's what Gap said, that's what Walmart said this week. Them going it alone, them hiring their own private consulting firms to audit these factories and then keeping that information confidential has proven not to work over the last 10 years. They need to come to this multi-stakeholder initiative and bring their market force to bring up the entire industry, not just the few factories that they are directly contracting with today. That's Daryl O'Rourke of The Good Guide. Uh, We mentioned that uh, Gap and Walmart did not sign this accord on fire and building safety in Bangladesh. Walmart announced Wednesday it will launch its own initiative. The Gap, as we heard, had uh, concerns about liability, and they've proposed that the remedy for noncompliance with an arbitration order in the pact would be that a company would be expelled from the accord. But as the L.A. Times points out, that would, in effect, amount to a company being relieved of any obligations. So uh, there's that response to that. We'll have more with Dara O'Rourke. Are you looking at your labels? More in one minute, Here and Now. Funding for Here and Now comes from MathWorks, creators of MATLAB and Simulink technical computing software, accelerating the pace of discovery in engineering and science. Find over 200 job openings at MathWorks.com. Welcome back. We're taking a closer look at how clothing is made in light of the factory collapse in Bangladesh that uh, killed more than 1,100 workers. A number of major European retailers agreed to an accord that would mandate truly independent safety inspections with things like public reporting. The American companies Abercrombie & Fitch and Calvin Klein signed on, but as we've been saying, the Gap and Walmart notably absent. Dara O'Rourke is associate professor at UC Berkeley and co-founder of the web website Good Guide. They rank brands based on social responsibility. He wants more transparency in manufacturing. And, and Dara, some brands do have this. They have maps on their website showing all their factories. Here's Eileen Fisher. I'm looking at her website. This is a very progressive clothing maker. Uh, she lists 17 factories. Here's the Bolo Ligu factory in China. So there it is. It's listed. It's pictured on a map. Very transparent. But as I look at it, I don't actually know anything about that factory. So you say what? The next step is is that they should be disclosing independent audits of those factories. 
as in the Bangladesh Accord, it will require independent safety inspections with public reporting. And again, we're talking about the new Accord. We're not talking about the old um, independent inspections, which turned out to be third-party companies that were paid by clothing makers and so might have been uh, indebted to them. Um, in the new Accord, these would be this would be a truly independent inspection. And you say there's something called transshipping that blurs the lines even more. What's that? Right. In the apparel industry, the history of the industry has been about quotas. The U.S. gives each country in the world a set amount of product they can import to the U.S. So the industry started to do what's called transshipping, where, you know, sew it in China, but if China's met its quota, they'll ship it to another country and then put the label on there saying it came from there. And so that added another layer of complexity. So some of the things we see that are sewn that say made in Italy may not actually be made in Italy, but they're transshipped the label is literally sewn on in Italy. This is, uh, you know, one of the challenges, again, where greater transparency, greater accountability over these supply chains is really critical so that consumers can know really where these products are coming from and what conditions they're being made under. Yeah, so for instance, we see on Patagonia's website, this is another company that uh, claims to be socially responsible. They show all their supplier locations, and they've got a sewing factory in Bangladesh, but a textile mill in Japan, another factory in El Salvador, a shoe factory in Indonesia. So it's all, all over the world. And Patagonia is not cheap. That It brings us back round to that. If these companies that are signing on to the accord pass those costs of fixing up factories or paying for private governance boards... It's no longer a an eight dollar t shirt. It's a fifty five dollar, you know, Patagonia tank top. Well, no. First of all, we're talking probably to improve the buildings in Bangladesh. You're talking maybe twenty cents more per garment. So this isn't doubling the price of these garments. And again, this is not the cheapest garments in the world. This is Patagonia is there, Levi's is there, Nike is there, Benetton, Zara, H and M, The Gap. These are companies with very healthy profit margins. And the reason they're in Bangladesh is because the margins are so great. Every brand I talked to two weeks ago after the catastrophe said, if we're not in Bangladesh, our competitors are beating us on margin. We're there because it's so profitable. There is margin. There is money in this system to pay for these things. And it really isn't about a question, will consumers pay double? It is, will these Brands and retailers pay a fair wage and pay the real cost of production and take a little bit of their profit away. And quite frankly, will U.S. consumers demand that they do it? How do we do that? (laughs) There's a critical role for consumers right now. I would say you should be tweeting a question to your favorite band. Hey, at Gap, why won't you sign the Bangladesh Decor? Hey, at JCPenney's. Hey, at Children's Place. You should be asking publicly, what are they doing to improve conditions in Bangladesh? Why are they not committing to this binding enforceable agreement to improve conditions. We need to move from being passive shoppers to active citizen consumers. Your life's work has been looking at labels, looking at lists of ingredients. Did you look through your clothing? or I don't know if you have children through, through, through your family's clothing. Yes, I did. And we found a pair of pajamas that was given to us as a gift that were made in Bangladesh. And, you know, this is something that immediately brought this home for me. Even though I study it, it's still very difficult for consumers to know what they're putting in on around their own family. We have a colleague who also saw a maid in Bangladesh on a child's clothing, and she started thinking about, you know, whose hands passed over this garment for my child? You know, are they now gone? I mean, it's kind of, was it, was it, I don't know if you had that same kind of connection. No, absolutely. I mean, it, when I you know, saw, it was my wife found this pajamas for my daughter that was sewn in Bangladesh, branded Children's Place, which was one of the brands where their product was found in Rana Plaza, the building that collapsed. It immediately you know, made my stomach sick, and, and I had the same kind of visceral feeling like, oh my God, you know, who is it that's behind these garments that we wear every day and you know what was the real cost of these garments in human suffering and environmental impact and et cetera et cetera and that's something where i think we have a responsibility as u.s consumers we have a connection to these factories in bangladesh in cambodia in china in el salvador and that we need to really take responsibility and play a positive role in this you know i'm wearing a pair of patagonia jeans right now 
And I also, you know, sent a message to Patagonia this week asking them about signing this accord. So I think it really is now incumbent upon us to move from being passive consumers to active citizens and to having our voices heard and to speaking up when these tragedies occur. Dara O'Rourke, associate professor at the University of California, Berkeley, also co-founder of The Good Guide. They list ingredients and manufacturing on products from toothpaste to clothing. Dara, thanks so much for speaking with us. Thank you very much. Well, and as always, we'd love your thoughts. Are you looking more closely at the labels? Would you actually tweet your favorite brand? Let us know, hereandnow.org. Meanwhile, a couple of items in the Here and Now pipeline. Watergate, back in the news, claims that we're living through it again. Really? There's a new computer game you can play to remind you what that was all about. Also, cultural commentator Torre on the importance of Prince to Gen X. And ahead of Memorial Day, uh, we'll ask, will the Jersey Shore be ready? That's all next week. Coming up, Robert Krolwich on the hierarchy in an elevator after the latest news here and now.